it's our last day of our gift series. I am so relieved I made it through. Um, I was really concerned there for a few days. The last six days have been really uh, rough pulling these off. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And for our last day, we're going to talk about how to make some DIY gift bags. This is one of my favorite projects because it's eco-friendly. It means throwing out a lot less garbage um, when Christmas is over or when birthdays are over. Um, we try to live really eco-friendly as much as we can. We try to save money as much as we can. And I found reusable gift bags are a great way to do this. So, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Sorry it's our last one, but I've got some really cool stuff coming for October and I can't wait to show you. So, you're really just taking a cut of fabric and you're facing it right sides together. And I've got two different fabrics I'm going to do now. I'm going to do one for something like a birthday, which is the Care Bears, of course. And then I have this fabric right here for Christmas. Just folding it right sides together. Now, I need to sew along two of the three sides and which side you choose will depend on um, it'll depend on um, where you want your opening now you want that to be directional for uh, for your fabric so for this one it doesn't matter but for my Care Bears I have like only one choice really so I sewed around both my sides for this one now I'm going to do the same thing for my Care Bears and of course because of the direction the Care Bears are facing I'm going to do these two sides. So I did these two sides and this is a good time right now if you want to run through over the edges with a serger you could do that that's what I'm going to do but it's not necessary you could zigzag if you're feeling like you really want to finish off the edges but this doesn't get a lot of washing so you're probably okay in terms of um, the fabric fraying otherwise so you could probably just leave as is. So what I did is I've got my edges surged and depending on if you want a boxy bottom which I think is a nice look and I have a bunch that are flat you could just keep this as is if you want but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little box for the bottom and what I'm doing is let's see. okay so here are my two sides and what you do is you pull you take each corner on the bottom and you're going to pull them out like this. So you want to make sure it's pretty even. And depending on how big you do your triangle here, you get a bigger size bottom. Uh, let's see here. So you're going to do this on both sides, but what I do is I do my first side first. And then I use the triangle as a um, guide for how big to make the second one. I'm going to do a pretty big triangle here. And again, you so there's the bottom. Now, you got to do this on the other side, and you want it to be equal. So, I am doing the same thing to flatten it again. And I'm going to take my piece of fabric that I cut off, and I'm going to use it as a guideline for the size that I just did. And I'll just show you how it looks from the bottom when you make your boxy bottom. You see that? It makes a really nice square, well, rectangular, I guess, bottom to your bag. What I'm gonna do is I need to um, create a casing for an elastic so that I can uh, close this up. Now, what I'm gonna do is turn over, turn this over this way. So there's our casing right there and I'm just gonna go sew right along there to create that casing. But first I want to add a buttonhole or some sort of hole for my, um, for my string or my cord to come out. So I created my buttonhole and now I'm going to just turn my fabric so that I can create the casing and I'll sew all the way around with a straight stitch.
So um, as you can see, I turned it over and then over again. So the buttonhole is on the inside. And again, the buttonhole is where the drawstring will go through. And as you can see, just turning it as I go around. You could actually do this ahead of time, iron and pin. It would probably look a lot nicer, but um, I've done quite a few of these and I'm pretty comfortable with um, just turning them over by hand as I go. So as you can see, we have our casing and we can flip this right sides out and we'll be able to just thread, oops, where'd it go? Oh, it's on the inside. Um, thread through the buttonhole. Okay, so I made a little strap out of the extra fabric I had and I just attached a um, safety pin to it. I'm gonna go through my buttonhole and just feed this all the way through um, to use as my drawstring. My drawstring through, I just attach a safety pin and then I just feed it through the casing real quick. It is pretty easy, it's just a little bit time consuming just to do it. Um, if you love reusable cloth items, I recommend checking out my book, The Complete Guide to um, Using Sewing and Laundering Reusable Cloth, because it might be something you'd like. Okay, guys, we are finished. Our last day of the 30 day series, I made it. You guys made it. If you've watched these all, I really, really appreciate it. Um, thanks for not leaving me lonely here. Um, so we're done. Put your gift inside. You can put some tissue paper if you want. Um, and then just pull your drawstring and um, you leave your gift just like that. Same thing with, this is my Christmas or holiday themed one. And again, same thing. It's very easy. You can do a lot of customization on this. If you want to spend an hour or two hours on each one, you can do that. Um, I've seen some really fancy, um, fancy options for this. I am not keen on making them super fancy just because you're going to probably need quite a few of these. And unless you're working on like one each year, um, you may want to cut your, you know, try not to take too long for each one. Um, I usually make like five each year to add to our stash and then they all end up what I do at, after Christmas all I have to do to store these is to fold them and I try to fold them nice and you can roll them you can roll them up or you can fold them however you want and you just store them for next year and as you can see this does not take up very much room compared to storing wrapping paper or storing bows and ribbon and all that crazy stuff it's much less, um, it, it takes up a lot less storage, which is awesome. And same thing for like the paper gift bags. I always save them. If someone gives us a paper gift bag, I save them and reuse them. Sorry, friends, if you've noticed that. Uh, <laughs> but I don't believe in throwing them away unless they're worn out. So those take up a lot of space, to be honest. Like even folded down, they still take up a lot of room. And you, you try to keep them nice. And you try to keep the tissue paper nice so you can reuse them. And it's not as easy. These are really easy to keep nice. And if, you know, let's say something spills on them, you can put them through the wash. I mean, they're just fabric. Um, unless you use something weird for a drawstring or do something weird, I don't know. Um, I mean, they're very easy to wash. You can iron them if you're really worried about, like, wrinkles after them sitting all year. So, again, very, very awesome idea and a great way to save time on the holidays and to make your life simpler and to be a little bit more eco-friendly. Um, you really can't go wrong with these. The key to this is buy your fabric on sale because you'll be able to find um, holiday fabric, particularly on sale. Now with, um, with the birthday fabric, you just use whatever. I usually will, I'll hit up the, um, the remnant spin and then get the 50% off on top of that. And I also just use fabric that I just have sitting around that I got on sale or that I bought thinking I liked it. And then I was like, yeah, I don't really want to make anything out of it. So that's that. Well, I hope you liked my tutorials and yes, this is it. I'm going to have more YouTube tutorials. I really enjoy doing this. I'll probably do more. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But I also do a lot of photo only tutorials and those are over on my blog, DIYDanielle.com. And a lot of my measurements and such for video tutorials are on my blog posts as well because I usually embed the videos in the post. So if you like my content, make sure to go over to my blog and subscribe to my email subscriber list. 
because that's the only way you're probably going to see everything. Or you could subscribe to my Facebook page. Again, like Facebook shows you some stuff, but not everything. But you'll probably eventually see my content if you are over there. So thank you guys so much for your support and for following along. I hope you enjoyed the series. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.